Matter of fact, I call that the one-two punch. They will sucker punch you first with the hovering over your life like a phantom, like a ghost, because you've gone no contact, right? You're not having anything to do with the narcissist. However, they're not taking no for an answer, so they will hover over your life by using flying monkeys and enablers, okay? And then the second sucker punch is when they have actually hoovered you back in and you are resupplying them. You're connected again. You're calling, you're visiting, you're interacting with the narcissist again. And my stars, my stars, thank you guys and gals so much for your subscription. Thank you for supporting me with this channel. Our star family is growing every day. Thank you guys and gals so much for that. Thank you for sharing your stories. You never know who's going to resonate with your stories. So when we share about what we have gone through due to narcissistic abuse, other people hear that and some people resonate with it. Even people who don't resonate with it, they're probably still learning something about narcissistic abuse and its aftermath. So thank you so much for sharing your stories. If this is your first time visiting Luminous Star, welcome to Luminous Star. And I certainly hope you become a part of our star family by clicking the subscription button below. Please mind the description box below for further details to today's video. Don't forget to like and share today's video. On that note, let's get right into it. All right. So narcissists who don't take no for an answer. All right. So they like to sucker punch. And then, you know, they pull the rug out from up under you. It's bad enough that they sucker punch you, but then on your way down, they're going to pull the rug out, right? <laughs> so the first punch consists of what I call the hovering, okay? So I recently had someone comment and they said that, you know, what hovering is, is what, like what a helicopter does. It lingers over one place. Okay, so whoever sent me that comment, thank you for the comment, however... Uh, I absolutely uh, wanted to point out that, yes, this is a maneuver that the narcissist does that we totally, a lot of us totally miss. It's so subtle. And that is that first punch when they hover over your life. You've gone no contact. You said no. You said enough to the narcissist. But they're not taking no for an answer. So they will hover over your life, just like that helicopter that stays in one area. It hovers over, right? The narcissist does the same thing, but it is so subtle that most of us don't realize it. I didn't even realize this until I really thought about it and I learned about narcissistic abuse a little bit more. So I compared my research to my own experience. So how do they hover over your life? How do they linger over your life? Well, you may see them out and about somewhere. You may, from your peripheral, you think you, that you see them, but do you really see them? More than likely, you have spotted them because they will go to places that you have frequented, right? They will try to show up at places after you've gone no contact, after you've said no to the narcissist, you may be at your job, you may be at school, you may be somewhere else that maybe you will go on a fairly regular basis. The narcissist is trying to find out where you are going and they will try to go there as well. Yeah, so this is again how they linger over your life. After you have said, no, there's no contact, the relationship is over. You're not having any more to do with the narcissist, but they're not taking no for an answer. So they will show up where you are. So they're like a, a, a phantom. They're like a ghost that's hovering over your life. You still feel their presence, even though they're physically not in your life. That, again, is the first sucker punch, and that's how they hover over your life. You still feel the presence of them, yet you have gone no contact yet you have ended the relationship and a narcissist is not taking no for an answer. Another part of the hovering, right, is when the enabler and or the flying monkey is bringing up the narcissist in a conversation. When the narcissist comes up in conversation, it's usually to try to hoover you back in. You know, playing on your sympathy, tugging on your heartstrings, even though the flying monkey and the enabler have full knowledge that you are no longer in a relationship with the narcissist. So what happens? They're not respecting the fact that you are no longer having a relationship with the narcissist or a cluster personality. This is not being respected. So you're feeling some kind of way about that, right? So this is how the narcissist is still hovering over your life. Their presence is still felt and they have sucker punched you. 
Okay, so you're still woozing. You're still feeling the effects because every now and then you're out. You may be at work. You may be at school. And again, you may see the narcissist and you may question, did I really see the narcissist? Is that really them? And then some, because you may see them from your peripheral. They may know where you work. They may know where you go to school. So they're going to try to pressure you into actually Hoover, being hoovered back in. They're going to try to get you to resupply them. The narcissist and custody personality, they're bullies. They're not going to take no for an answer. When you have said that you're done with the narcissist, they're probably not done with you. So again, we're still in the hovering phase. We haven't gotten to the Hoover yet. The narcissist and cluster personality, they like to have the dirt on all of the flying monkeys and all of the enablers before they're going to use them to have you hoovered back in. Since the flying monkey is a acquaintance of yours or a friend of yours, they may be a coworker, you better believe that the narcissist, they're gonna have some dirt on that person. For example, the flying monkey may be a college friend of yours. The flying monkey may have parents who are alcoholics. And again, this is just an example. The narcissist who's your family member that's using that particular person as a flying monkey, they know that. So that's leverage that they have over the flying monkey. The flying monkey may be at the narcissist's mercy some way, shape, or form because they have dirt on him or her. Okay, so um, I just want to make it clear that narcissists and cluster personalities, they don't just pick any random person for a flying monkey or an enabler. They, have, they strategize how they're going to execute. You're seeing the narcissist where you work at. You're seeing the narcissist at places that maybe you like to hang out or go out for fun. All of a sudden, the narcissist is popping up everywhere. It's not just your peripheral anymore. You actually see him or her. And you may walk by them and not say anything. And again, you add that with the flying monkeys and the enablers questioning you, right? As if something's wrong with you for not having a relationship with the narcissist. And again, they have full knowledge and more than likely they understand just like the narcissist does, why you have ended the relationship, why you've gone no contact. Make no mistake, no one's confused. No one is confused about why the relationship is no longer uh, happening with the narcissist. While you have ended the relationship, nobody's confused. So don't ever let anyone tell you that they don't know what's, what's going on. So don't ever fall for that trick that they're confused. The enabler and the flying monkey, they understand exactly why you're no longer in contact with the narcissist why that relationship is over so again all of this is designed the hovering and then the hoovering is all designed to pressure you actually bully you into resupplying the narcissist in order for the narcissist to be successful with the sucker punches okay i call it again the one two punch with the hovering and the hoovering the only way they're going to be successful is if the flying monkey and or enabler absolutely convinces you that you are wrong for going no contact, that you are wrong somehow for ending the relationship. You know, they have to play on your emotions and they also have to make sure that you are very confused and that you're second guessing yourself. I want to encourage you in this video, don't second guess yourself. If your inside, if your core, if your instincts, if your intuition is telling you that the narcissist has no place in your life, go with that. Trust that. Honor that. So I really wanted to make it clear how the hovering and then the hoovering, again, I call it the one-two punch, which in my opinion is a sucker punch or two, and it works pretty well for the narcissist because a lot of people, they buckle and they fold up under that because of the pressure, because they're being systematically bullied into doing something that they really know is not for their best interest. So as long as you have the connection or an active relationship with the flying monkey and or the um, enabler, the narcissist is going to be able to work that to his or her advantage.
Let's make no mistake about that. And it may behoove you to understand that the flying monkey and the enabler, they have an agenda 